you know, there's copyright litigation has been going on ever since we've had copyright law. And people have been licensing content for a very long time. And so, you know, I understand your point that, you know, given the, the, the depth of that verdict, you know, could that have had an effect? But not, 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 I have not seen it. And I have not heard anything like that from any of my counterparts and colleagues. Perhaps if licensees were being sued, then there would be a shift. But I haven't seen that happen. Talk to us a little bit about how you um, address music clearance when you're dealing with films and you're dealing with TV series and the like and sort of draw a contrast between, you know, well-known musical works and maybe when you're dealing with independent artists who are new and they might not have a lot of representation or you, you may not know much about them. Okay, so um, I don't know. So Mr. Lee, he is a huge music lover. And he has very, very diverse and vast musical tastes. In uh, the series on Netflix, She's Gotta Have It, he, for both season one and season two, he invited independent musicians to submit music for consideration in the show. And we selected, for both seasons, we selected probably 10 or 15 independently written and produced songs to be included in the show. Um, and that, that did present I guess for me, migraines. Um, <laughs> um, there were, because there were, you know, in that group, you get a lot of, I, I, let me draw the distinction between the, the terminology I'm gonna use. Let me refer to them as recording artists and not necessarily as musicians. The reason I say this is because um, I would have conversations with many of them about their process so that I could verify who the proper permission parties were for this music. And often it was extremely frustrating because they could not even have conversations with me about authorship. I couldn't use words like authorship. I couldn't ask, did you write the song? Or how did you write the song? Many of them, when they think of writing a song, they think of literally like, you know, making marks with a pen on staff paper. That's what write means. Um, and if that, if that wasn't their process, they didn't know how to answer. Another, another response I would get is, yes, I wrote the whole song. And I would say, you wrote it entirely from scratch? Yes, I wrote it entirely from scratch. So then I would have, have to ask the million dollar question. Did you use a producer? Oh yeah, I used a producer. Did you use a beat from the producer? Yes, I wrote it entirely from scratch using a beat by a producer. <laughs> I wish I could show you the pile of, I should have brought them. I have yeah. piles of emails that said that exact statement. I wrote it entirely from scratch using a beat from a producer. Then I would have to ask, when you say a beat, do you mean a rhythm played on a percussion instrument, which is what the musicians in this room would understand to be a beat? And, I, and then I would follow it up with, or do you mean all of the sounds I hear except for your voice? Yes, all of the sounds that you hear except for my voice is what I used from the producer. <laughs> so, you know, and then that's when I'm thinking about, you know, where, like, where can I, do I need coffee now or do I need scotch? Like, this is, like, this is driving me crazy. So it was extremely frustrating because in many cases, these people couldn't find the producer. There's a whole cottage industry of producers who actually create musical accompaniments and they post them online and, you know, interested recording artists can borrow these tracks for various purposes. And they get these exclusive license agreements that are, that's a whole other headache. But so what often what they'll do is, you know, um, artists can sometimes lease these tracks. Sometimes they can purchase them outright. Sometimes there's, you know, and they have different limitations as to how the tracks may be used. It almost never includes synchronization, of course. <laughs> and I would always have to ask if they can, number one, locate the producer, and number two, can they send me a copy of the so-called exclusive rights agreement 
Because that, that's the other thing. They would, they would have these exclusive rights agreements and very happily assure me that they have the exclusive rights to use the beat. And then, of course, when I would get a look at the document that they had, it would alternatively use words like exclusive rights and then license and then ownership. Like it was never, you know, the, the, the document itself would contradict itself. And then I would have to explain to these, you know, to these artists that, and, you know, exclusive rights is not the same as having the copyright in the, in the track. And it also doesn't mean that you can sub-license. And so, you know, they would insist that they wrote the song because maybe they created a melody or maybe they, you know, rhymed over the track. And to them, that's creating an entire song. I would ask many of them if they had ever heard of Miles Davis. I was happy that many of them had. And then I would remind them, okay, well then according to your definition, he didn't write any music because many of his records don't include vocals. And then they would think about it and they would think, oh, oh, you know, and so, so that presented a lot of challenges. Ultimately, what we would do is we would locate the producers um, and we would, you know, have to do a tremendous amount of due diligence so that we could be confident that we identified all of the potential claimants and that we got, you know, that we basically obtained licenses from everybody involved. Did you ever have a situation where the team or, or Spike Lee really wanted to have a song and, and said, do whatever you got to do, Rochelle, you got to be able to use that song? I, I feel like you're, like you must have a hidden camera somewhere following me around. <laughs> yes. I do, I do. Yes. And it's always like, it seems like he always falls in love with the song that's the most impossible one to get. I, you know, it's, you know, it's like, it's like some of us shopping, you know, like your eye goes to the most expensive thing in the store. So yeah, it, in fact, there was one song that where the producer, we did find the producer. First of all, the producer didn't want to respond to my emails or phone calls because, you know, they all think I'm a crank caller. When I say I'm calling on behalf of Spike Lee, they think it's a joke. So then I have to go through all these, you know, I'll have to invite them to like do a Google search for me so that they can then determine that I'm, you know, that I really am who I say I am and so forth. And then they can finally call me back. Anyway, once, once that was established, I discovered that this one, for this one song, we ultimately were able to clear. The original producer sold the track to somebody else. And so we then had to get a license from that person who was also highly unresponsive. And, the, and neither of them were the people that submitted the track to us. And you know, so, and then we were worried that maybe there were other people who were using the same track because that's, that's also a risk. We, we did have another song where two people submitted Different, you know, different songs that both use the same underlying beat. And so, yeah, we hit next. We're to pick something up.